Hello everyone, thank you for watching my presentation. My name is Jay, and uh, we're, we're going to talk about two styles of Renaissance techniques. Um, basically, the original title was like Renaissance, Training, Style, and Legacy. But because there's only going to be two styles out of, out, of, out of the vast techniques and styles we have during the Renaissance era, and because the legacy is, is very short, um, oh, it's not short-lived, it's just, it's expensive to own copies of these arts. Um, and of course, you know, I can also explain training briefly, and that's why I, I decided to, like, just make this title, because it's more applicable to the PowerPoint, and, uh, and it only makes sense. Because I'm not telling you the entire history of the Renaissance, but I am highlighting two key techniques. Um, because I, I, as an engineer, um, I, I'm also into arts and also music too. I wouldn't say arts um, as much apart from cooking. I mean, I do like to cook food, but I'm also into music. And uh, that's why I post this um, Renaissance-style music orchestra going on um, to pretty much <clears throat> tame my my musician history. Uh, or like my musician practice um, when I was taking piano lessons for some time. Professor Rocha, I want to say thank you for allowing us to make this PowerPoint. It was not easy. This project was, was tough and tricky. This is this will be my third attempt making a uh, recording for this, um, but it was a good practice. Um, um, it was good. It, you, know, you definitely opened up and you, you tested like my like research skills again, so I'm, I'm happy about that. And um, <clears throat> I'm just really happy that you gave us the opportunity for us to make a presentation of all of what we, what we learned in, in art class, and, and I'm very grateful for that. Okay, so I could have made this change, but <clears throat> three sections we'll talk about in, in this particular. We'll first talk about how we'll first talk about training, um, history, and history beyond the famous painting, or, or really the style and, and techniques, and also legacy. Okay. And of course, these are all from uh, from the Renaissance period, not Baroque. Even though there are similarities, it's mainly from the Renaissance period. And I say Baroque because, you know, I was learning piano, and we had to like learn uh, J.S. Bach because he because all the pianists they built uh, and they built from J.S. Bach because he taught you voices and chords. And so, but he was a Baroque composer, and there was no um, pianist uh, for the. Renaissance time period. I think the only famous musician I can think about the Renaissance period is uh, Antonio Vivaldi. I believe so. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I can think about. A good musician. Okay. So, brief. Again, look at the Mona Lisa. Okay, it's the great painting of Mona Lisa. The artist was Leonardo da Vinci. We all know that. We don't know when he completed this painting. That's why I put that year frame. Some say it was between before 1507, 1513, 1517. I just put it that. I just put that time for um, time frame in there um, um, was uh, of when he completed the work. And of course, the highlight of, of the technique of this picture is Smamato, but there's more than just that. And we all know this picture. Um, we're actually, we're actually going to talk about the Christine Chapel as a whole when we get to those slides. But um, this is also another difficult art to do, or, or a, another difficult technique to do. Um, they both are really you know, equally difficult, and the thing is, is that you need to have a lot of time and dedication and, and a lot of practice to do what you have to do with these techniques. Um, you could say, yeah, they both go hand in hand with each other, um, but, I, but me, Coming from like an engineering background, even though I'm not done with my degree, I like I like the solutions and, and the development they actually put in these paintings. Apart from just picking up a brush and just make, making paints all over, they did more than just that, and we'll talk about that briefly. <clears throat> so, what do these paintings have in common? That's true, they do look be uh, I'm beautiful, and they're uh, from, you know from the Renaissance, but that's not only the case um, because subjectivity depends on the art. Uh, from Duchamp, that's what he said. That even though I'm not a fan of Duchamp. Uh, you know, I'm just making a an argument to what I said in the first sentence. Um, that's true. Certain groups of people, they, um, they did make them famous, okay. Um, but but there was a reason why those certain groups made them famous is because of the lineage. Uh, everyone knows that like these paintings are some of the best work uh, Da Vinci and also uh, Angelo did. Um, they also took a long time, and that's standard for that time. In fact, it should be taking more time than it is yeah, during that time because it was a cream of the crop selection. It was actually because they both were full-time artists um, with like years of experience, 
post training. This is post training, and they and and they also had some imaginative and and they also had some, you could say, engineering thoughts or creative thoughts. You know, to really make those paintings come out as like those as like the individuals in those paintings were about to come out and see us. Okay, and because of that, really the really the years and experience think of it as like a doctor practice a uh, practicing at his you know physician's clinic or, or a lawyer practicing as as a firm these are artists practicing at their studio day by day that's pretty much what made them who they are the top one percent of one percent of practicing 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 and this is more of more of a fact page i forgot to put some stuff about um leonardo um leonardo da vinci but Michelangelo wasn't a painter. He was just he was just a sculptor, and his parents actually didn't really wanted him to go into art because it wasn't a manly thing. But his dad, being a dad, decided to be like, okay, you showed some childhood prodigy or some talent, I will help you out find an apprenticeship. And as for Da Vinci, well, Da Vinci he wasn't just a painter. He was like an engineer, an engineer, an inventor. Yeah, I mean, he also contributed a lot to quite a few to actually sciences and mathematics. So. Because these guys, they they had a lot of stuff, a lot of you see stuff that are so a lot of tools, powerful thoughts and tools that can be applied to art is, is how they were able to produce these amazing paintings. Okay. The, briefly, to become a um, to become an uh, um, an artist during this time, you know, you, I, I mean, you know, you had to first um, I'm add some childhood um, childhood hood, hood talent because this was because this was an, an investment your family was, was going to make on you because your family because you first had to find an apprenticeship who would first accept you. Okay, think of it as like applying to Harvard. It was essentially pretty much trying to get an, into a top apprenticeship, and then of course the first few years your parents would pay for your housing, meals, etc. But then. When you came to a point, I'm um, where like now you were trained, you know the the I'm um, the master craftsman of the shop, notices uh, I'm the like no you um you know what you're doing and you can do it as good as him or close enough. He will then start asking you to make art for him under his name because he still owns the shop and so essentially the money that he makes selling your art under his name is the money uh, I'm I'm that's going to be for you and, and and like it has to pass through his selection. Too. Like you see, if you give give something garbage, he's obviously not going to send something garbage, and he'll probably fire you. Okay, um, okay. So when he notices that um, um, that you know what you're doing, he'll start paying you essentially. Okay, and then of course you also have to travel to other cities. I, I'm, I'm to go. I'm, I'm getting some practice. It was kind of like art school. Uh, I'm just a little bit more mobile. I'm, I'm to make connections. You can also um sub specialize in sculpting or painting. Angelo did both. And then, and then either you can either join someone else's studio and and do and do uh, works together, or you, or you can start your own. And then, if you wanted to work work for the church, which is super competitive and difficult, you had to you had to be really good at what you're doing. Because even though because this was this was like two percent, so you see, out of, um, so you see, out of a hundred people, let's just say five people, I mean, you know, made it through the apprenticeship. Okay, so so okay, so so from those five people, only one person will I I will have the opportunity to um, to become a commission base with the church. Okay, so so it's like one one, one out of a hundred, you know, a percent. It was super competitive. It's because it was the cream of the crop. Same thing went for musicians, and the same thing went for uh, I I'm one for all the other factors in in the church because they were the ones who like rule. I'm um, we're like rule at the time. And it's also not easy becoming your own studio as well. You had to you had to, you know, convince people that, hey, I can do a really good job making a sculpture or a sculpture out of you or painting you. It's not the easiest thing. Okay. So Smovato, why is this um, um why is this a painting uh, um Mona Lisa so famous, okay? First off, it's really like realistic. The the haziness gives you the gives you the realistic, okay? The fingers are, are realistic. The curves um I'm um, the wrinkles on her clothes, the veil on her hair, the shade on her face, you know, on face. Okay, from a distance, it looks like an actual person is staring at me. Okay, but what you don't understand is that Da Vinci, he was also setting optics at the time, so he knew how to mess with like depth, I'm uh, um, um, depth perception. So he pretty much combines um 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 smarado with um um with depth perception to pretty much give you a hyper realistic painting. Painting that, like, even from a distance, well, I wouldn't say from a distance, but like, you see, if you're like close to it, you'll see that, oh my goodness, this is actually, 
genius. And he, and he, and he used to think about it. Engineering plus artists, he gave you something so, so beautiful. Okay, and we're gonna even go back to it too. I mean, just like look at it. Like you see, even though the picture is so close to me, you know, you see, you know, like look, he, 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 a lot of 3D style, like you see in this. And 3D art is, is is hard. It's something that like I I have a tough time doing. We we, I'm, we, we have the background lake. I, I, I'm I'm you know we know background lake subject and focus. It's more or less close, close to a close to a photograph is what you can say. And don't forget that he also had um, um, he also had experience. He was 51 years of age when he painted Mona Lisa. He was eight years um eight years older, so so he was 43 when he painted the Last Supper. Uh, um, but he was 51 when he was. One second. Um, yeah, so he was 43 when he painted the, um, the Last Supper, and he was 51 when he, when he painted um, Mona Lisa, okay? And so again, you see, he was experimenting uh, on an object, object thing. He thanked outside the box to create the Mona Lisa, and that's what's impressive about him. He wasn't the only one. Uh, Raphael, he also, made, um, um, he also made Madonna of the Meadow. It's a biblical painting, and this was also, and, and I mean, again, looks, you know, spumato, okay? See, like, look. Uh, um, basically, look at the background. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, all, I mean, you know, the haze again. You know, shade. Uh, I'm shade. A, a little bit clear. He was. Um, I'm clear. This was, <clears throat> of course. He's, yeah, I'm not trying to say on this art was bad. It's nothing, nothing close to like you know. I, I'm Da Vinci, but again, you see, you know, this was. <clears throat> Again, it looks like because this is a moving picture. It looks like the baby is about to come come out of the picture, or like you know, tip over on my side from a distance. Okay, okay. and um, this is not Da Vinci's work. I just realized that now. It's of course it's someone else's work. I should have said here's a picture of of of, of um, Da Vinci's technique. Small small to use in other works. This is an, an, a huge error on my part. <clears throat> but Fresco. Fresco is something else. Oh my goodness, guys! You know, Spumato was not easy. Okay, again, it takes more than ten years to uh, um to. I mean, you'll never be able to like use perfect at a technique unless you spend one thousand hours, and that's just the base that you have to spell, um, um uh, spend. Okay, perfection is subjective, on 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 artists. What I'm trying to say, but however, the more experience you have, this is a good criteria um to judge by. The more experience you have, and the more practice you know what you're doing, the better your art will be, and the more known it's 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 gonna get. Cause think about it, you know, yeah. okay. Sistine Chapel, you come over here, it's so bright, the colors are bright, you know, and and of course, you know, I'm, I mean, if you want, in in the day or night, it looks like a sculpture coming out, I mean, I mean, just look at it, look at this over here, it looks like little legs hanging down from the ceiling, but this is all painted, little, okay, I'm, I'm okay, and of course, like, you see, like, you know, over here, I'm over here, and, and, and the angle of this camera, which, which, well, why how this picture was taken was, was impressive. I mean, just, I mean, just like you see, like, look at the sky. You can see this. It looks like, I mean, it looks like, like you know, he's, I mean, he's sitting on, on top of the ceiling, like, like Angelo. And my goodness, Sir Michelangelo. And it's not easy because the thing is, is that you only have a certain certain amount of time to paint on on wet plaster. So it's three, so, so it's three layers of of plaster, and of course, it's, it's going to be wet. But before, but you had to paint on that plaster before it dries up because it's the chemical reaction with the plaster and, and the paint and, and, and the paint to create carbon monoxide to give the paint its its so bright colors. So you had to work within time. So I mean, so essentially, like you know, um, it wasn't. So of course, you know, there's no way he got the entire ceiling done within the day. It took him four years, obviously. But he would basically do is. So you see, like you know, a, a subsection of of this area maybe it will probably take you 15 hours, okay? But obviously plaster probably, you know, I don't know how long on plaster drives in, but like maybe like you see four to five hours. So we had to do it piece by piece by piece by piece by piece. And of course this is just one part of the Sistine Chapel. It's all over the place. He had to paint it, uh, um, at fresco. So first he had to wet the plaster, put the paint on, very very carefully and. This is this is a really unforgiving canvas. If you mess up, you have to you, you have to chisel it pretty much, scrape it out, chisel it, erase everything out, and restart over. 
That's why it took him four years because he probably made mistakes and, and, and like redone it, redone it, redone it. Okay. Okay. And because of, and because of the chemical reaction and the bright colors, he is a, it essentially makes it like what I was saying. It sculptures something. Something he sculpted out of color. Like it, like like it makes you feel like it's coming out of coming out of, uh, out of the ceiling. Even even look over here. Okay. Let's even look over here. Sorry for stuttering. Here's an, here's another style of um, a fresco painting. It looks like this guy's like leg um, leg is out and like if you if you like look closely, there's a mini shadow over here. You can even see that there too. <sighs> okay, and of course, <clears throat> I'm, I'm again going to talk about the 3D effect, and uh, and and of course the bright colors, but even his technique. I don't know if he does um smamado, um but. When we went closer, or when someone went closer to go see the fingers, it was very detailed. It was very close to fingers, very close to her. It was so detailed. I mean, like, you know, look at the skin tone, the elbow, the shade. Very, very, very detailed. And, and again, that comes between our shade of colors. If it's light, everything will be flat. But, like, if it's dark, you will start to see everything 3D. Like, you see, like, you know, it, it looks like the pink, it, it looks like his finger is pointing out, out of the surface. God's finger. Okay. And, uh... <clears throat> and um, I don't know how he got it on top of the ceiling. I, I, I think he scaffolded himself all the way up there. Regardless, it's just impressive what he did. Just you know, just hanged himself up there, paint dripping. Had to make sure, uh, had to do this, you know, just piece by piece, time by time. And it wasn't even, and, and he wasn't even a painter. He was just a sculptor, and he still put out all this magnificent work. And what's the legacy? Well, nobody wants to do it. <laughs> it's because you know. It's not easy to do, um, to do the, um, to do this kind of works, and really the, you know, nobody really cares about well, you know, the rich people or people who are wealthy or like who know the value of art, people who have an art background. They 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 care about these paintings, but for the most part, people like me, we don't, we don't really, um, or, or not people like me, but just modern art doesn't really like appreciate. You see classical art and whatnot. It's just it's. It's own. I mean, like I shouldn't say doesn't appreciate. It's just, it's just his own thing, and the, and the and the demand for these kind of arts, you know, um, are gone because it, it's a generation by generation by generation change. Um, but if you ask me, these are considered like royalty, and these are like luxury items. Okay, so if someone is driving a nice Cadillac like Escalator, like as a, or, um, or like has like a nice office in like a law firm, or or, or like as a doctor. He, um, doctor, and like, of course, if you grew up, you know, and, and it also depends on what time and, and like how you were like raised. For me, I, for me, I mean, you know, I studied classical piano for some time, and and so I know, and so I know the value, in my opinion, and how value broke, uh, Renaissance, Romantic era mu mu musics were, and the art that coincide with these periods. Okay, these are not, these are arts that that. That we can't get anymore because it'll take a lifetime to produce these images. Okay, uh, I'm okay. You, okay, like it's more than just being a full-time artist. It's about having your passion, about having some like really intuitive. I'm um, um, into an intuitive think tank mind, um, or or just some household, or, or just some or, or just some tricks to pretty much put in, put um, put into your art to 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 make it look good and and and, and like you know woo. It's like a, and or um, it's like a, it's like an engineer, electrical engineer, because that's what I study, getting an A in like electromagnetics, and you know woo wooing people out saying, oh I know electromagnet, oh I know electromagnetics, it's very interesting, because of, because of how complicated the math is and whatnot, but there's tricks to solve some of these equations to make it simple. So, you know, um, it's, it's mainly like you see the wealthy who can like afford these paintings. It's been said that the Mona Lisa is worth more than more than four four hundred eighty three million dollars it will probably go up in price and of course it's priceless for the Sistine Chapel because you can't really take a piece of it but you can get copies and um copies where I'm um, where they used to you know do some photographic work for also some money but I mean it's just very difficult to find painters even even painters who were who used to paint the presidents and, and like lawyers of their firm because back then they would uh, you know, presidents and lawyers, you know, they would do painting portraitures. It wasn't, it was, it wasn't that. It's, it's nothing compared to, you know, this. Nothing, because this is more than, more than a lifetime to master some of these techniques. Okay. 
So thank you so much for watching my presentation. I know I went 10 minutes over, but if you have any emails, or, um, but, um, but if you have any questions, please email me at the following. And you guys uh, have fun and have a very successful life. Thank you.